Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Corsair has released a stack of new all-in-one liquid coolers and you guys have been asking us about them quite a bit, so in regular old Gear Seekers fashion, I'm going to show you how to install them. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the brand new Corsair H150i Elite LCD on both AMD and Intel based desktop systems. Now, this video is for demonstration purposes only, and this video is not a review. We're not talking about thermals or anything like that. It's not what these videos are for. Every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement, and every setup is different. Make sure you do your research as to what will fit in your case before buying any parts for any of your PC builds. Let's get into it. This guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Corsair H150i Elite LCD on both AMD and Intel based desktop motherboards. This includes every Intel desktop platform from the last 12 or so years and every motherboard that supports Ryzen processors. So for the last five or so years, this includes every Intel desktop socket that you're gonna ask about in the comments. So make sure you watch the entire video before asking any questions because chances are, I'm gonna answer most of those inevitable questions right here in this video. So let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboards in this video are the MSI Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4 and the ASUS ROG Strix B550A Gaming. The case used is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPUs are the Intel Core i7-12700K and the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. These parts were only chosen for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a discussion about pricing or performance or thermals or anything like that. And this case was chosen as it's one of the most popular cases on the market right now. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct for this type of installation. It also depends on your case and the clearances in your case as well. Yes, this cooler does have RGB and it has a screen and the fans are addressable RGB. No, your motherboard does not require RGB to use the lighting on this cooler and the fans. Yes, your motherboard does require at least one USB 2.0 header for this to work. Yes. Both fan cables need to be plugged in because your fans either won't spin or they won't illuminate. Yes, you can put whatever fans you want on this cooler, but make sure you do your research first though. Yes, everything that you're seeing in this video for insulation is included in the box. I didn't add anything else. Yes, this guide also applies to the H100i Elite and the H170i Elite versions of this cooler as well. So the 240 and the 420. Yes, you can use this as a reference for those coolers as well. Yes, you do need to have IQ installed before the fans illuminate. Don't worry, they're not broken. You just need to install the software. Yes, it will work with almost every Intel and AMD CPU and motherboard combo that you're going to ask about in the comment section from the last 12 or so years until the foreseeable future. No, this will not work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB, or RGB Fusion. Yes, the thermal paste is pre-applied. No, you don't need to add any thermal paste for this installation whatsoever. Yes, we have reused some footage in this video as there's quite a bit of overlap, especially with the wiring. And no, you don't have to fill the cooler up at all with coolant ever, never, ever, ever. You don't need to maintain it at all. Don't worry about coolant at all. We've divided this video into sections for both AMD and Intel insulation because we wanted to condense it into one large video as well as a section for wiring since they're common across all types of insulation and also a quick look at how to configure the cooler in Corsair IQ. You can use the chapters in this video to jump to any section that is relevant to you. But first of all, let's see what's in the box. Here it is, ladies and gents, the Corsair H150i Elite LCD. Let's unbox it and see what we get in the box. This is just gonna be a quick unboxing. There's a safety and warranty information guide. This is basically just talking about your warranty and whatnot. There's a bunch of mounting kits for basically every socket you can think of. So there's everything for Intel, both HEDT and Threadripper stuff from AMD. We're not covering HEDT stuff in this video. There's three of the new ML Elite fans 
from Corsair as well. Uh, we will also be walking through all of this in the video. These fans are a new fan that have been designed specifically for these newer generation of coolers. There's also this new RGB hub, which you plug both the fan and the RGB cable into both do need to be plugged in to use this cooler. There's also a USB 2.0 splitter cable, which is actually good for older motherboards and some of the boards that don't have two USB 2.0 headers. And last of all, the cooler itself. Since this is most likely people's first time seeing this kind of cooler from Corsair, Let's get familiar with all the components and show you a few things that I recommend doing before installing this cooler. Let's get familiar with the components that come with this cooler. First off is the 360 millimeter radiator, the pump top itself. Now, I would recommend removing the plastic here. It's got standard Intel cooler mounting. So if you're installing on Intel, you don't need to change anything and pre-apply thermal paste. So you don't need to use any thermal paste of your own. At this stage of installation, I would recommend removing the screen here. It connects via a bunch of magnets. There's four magnets in total. And if we flip over the pump top, I'll show you how this works. So as you can see, there's four magnets, one in each corner, and there's a single connection point to control the screen itself. And this also sends signaling to the pump. If we take a closer look at the pump top, you'll see that there's four posts where the magnets physically attach and those pins where the screen plugs into. Now, there's a bunch of cables that actually come off the screen itself. This one is a ribbon cable for controlling basically everything. There's a USB cable, which gives you IQ control. There's a single cable here, which needs to be plugged in, which sends information to the pump for pump speed. Nothing here is optional, all needs to be plugged in. This new control box from Corsair is not a Commander Pro. Here's the connection for the screen itself to show you. There's also connections here. You can see there's RGB for the fans as well as PWM for the fans too. And there's a USB cable which plugs into your motherboard for IQ control as well as SATA or SATA power to power the hub itself. Now, if we take a bit of a look at these fans, you'll notice there's two cables that come from the fans. The first cable is the PWM fan cable. This makes the fan spin. And the other cable is an RGB cable which actually illuminates the fan itself. This section is for AMD AIM4 insulation. If you're after the Intel insulation, feel free to skip to that chapter right now. Let's start off with AIM4 installation for AMD systems. So you've got some thumb nuts, you've got some standoffs that screw into the stock backplate. You do need to have the stock backplate. There's also the brackets which need to be changed from the pump top itself and 12 screws that are used to attach the radiator and the fan to the case. We're gonna start off with removing the stock Intel bracket here. Just pull firmly and they should pull off. It is a bit tight the first time around, but I'm gonna show you this one more time from a different angle. If you pull them firmly, they will pop off eventually. Now what you wanna do is grab those AM4 brackets. They're symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which side you put them on. Basically line them up with the groove and push them in firmly into place. Do this on both sides and you should be good to go. I'm gonna show you this again from another angle just so you can see how it slots in. Basically it just slots in and with a little bit of force, not too much, it should slot in nicely. And this is what the finished product should look like once you have both brackets installed. Now, what we're going to do is on your AIM4 board, you will need to use the stock backplate, but you do need to remove the stock mounting hardware. So these are very, very easy to remove. There's four screws in total, and most AIM4 boards will be like this. Basically, just remove the four screws and remove the four brackets, and we'll be using that stock backplate with the motherboard. Well, now what you wanna do is grab the standoffs. You'll notice that the thread sizes are different. So the bigger thread size is the side that screws into the motherboard. All you need to do is then finger tighten these standoffs into the stock backplate for the board and you should be good to go. Do not over tighten these. It will just cause you a lot of trouble later down the line if you need to remove anything. Now, we're gonna install the radiator. I, I'm, I've gotta say this, tubes up for a case like this is okay. It's not going to kill the pump. Now what you wanna do is slide that radiator in. And what we're going to do next is locate the fans and we're gonna need one of the screws. And for this installation, this is the correct way. Slide the screw through the fan. Then what you want to do is then just finger tighten the screws into the radiator itself. 
I usually use two screws per fan to do this just to hold it into place here. It does make it a little bit easier if you need to reposition it so you don't need to use a screwdriver straight off the bat. Rinse and repeat this process for all three fans. Again, just do each corner just so you can align your radiator properly, especially with this case. We get a lot of people asking about it because you, what you need to do with this case is slide the radiator all the way up for the front panel to go back on, then get a screwdriver and whiz up all the screws and then you should be good to go. Now, at this point, I would recommend pushing all the fan cables through to the back side for easy cable management. This will make it way easier later on when we need to plug in the fans and all the RGB stuff. Okay, let's attach the pump top. Now we need some thumb nuts. You need all four here and you can screw these in, but I would recommend finger tightening them first. Basically what we're gonna do is line up the pump top with those standoffs that we previously installed onto the motherboard and push down firmly, but not too hard. Then get your thumb nut and just do one corner up very lightly, do the opposing corner so we can distribute that mounting pressure evenly, then put the next corner on, and lastly, the last corner. Now use a screwdriver to tighten these up. Don't over tighten them, just tighten them until they stop. And yeah, don't push down or anything, just be gentle. You can damage stuff if you're not careful. At this point, I would probably go ahead and remove the plastic off the screen because now we're gonna get into putting the screen on, All right? Look how lovely that thing looks, All right? This is very easy to attach, it's magnetic. So all you need to do really is line it up and push down gently. Who's that guy on the screen? Oh, it's me. And you should be good to go. Now what we're going to do is get the ribbon cable and the USB cable, and we're going to pass them through to the back side for cable management and plugging them in later on in the video. You'll notice there's a single cable now that's left over. We need to plug this into the motherboard. Locate a fan header on your board, preferably CPU fan or CPU opt. It doesn't matter, it's all dependent on your motherboard manufacturer. I'm plugging it into CPU fan for this video just because ASUS boards will complain about it otherwise. Next thing you wanna do is locate the USB splitter cable. And what we're going to do is locate a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. And what I usually do is feed this in through the back side of the case and then plug it into that header. As far as aim for installation, this is everything that needs to be done that's relevant specifically to AMD and AM4. There's a whole section that we're going to be doing talking about all of the wiring that is common for both Intel and AMD installation later on in the video. And you can use the chapters to skip to that part as well. This section is for Intel installation. If you're after the AMD installation, feel free to skip to that chapter right now. All right, it's time for Intel LGA 11.5X 1200 and 1700 installation. This will support all the way from first gen all the way up to 12th gen. So you can see there's some thumb nuts here, some screws to screw in the radiator and the fans, some standoffs. These are LGA 1700 standoffs because that's what I'm using for this video. And this backplate, which will support everything from first gen all the way up to 12th gen. Okay. Let's start off by installing the backplate. The way I recommend doing this is kind of finding the sweet spot. So it's 78 millimeter for the offset for LGA 1700 specifically, 75 for the others in this video. And because we're not doing AGDT, uh, yeah, they don't usually use this backplate. But anyway, the way I'd recommend doing this is putting the backplate on a flat surface. I would recommend having the motherboard out of the case for this and basically dropping the motherboard onto the backplate itself so everything lines up nice and perfectly. Now what you wanna do is then locate the standoffs. These are LGA 1700 standoffs, but the 1200 and 11.5X ones will be slightly different, but they work the same way. Basically what you wanna do is finger tighten them into each corner just to hold the back plate in and just rinse and repeat that process until all the corners are in and then we can move on to the next thing, right? Here's just another angle so you can see how this goes in. Once all the standoffs are installed, it should look a little something like this. Now we'll just flip the board over just to show you what it looks like on the back side of the board. And this is about the offset that you'll see with LGA 1700. It will be different for LGA 1200. All right, grab the radiator. And basically what you wanna do is feed the radiator into the case tubes up for the insulation in this case does not matter it's fine guys okay what we're going to do next is locate the fan 
and you'll need one of the fan screws. And what we're going to do is feed that screw through the fan. We're going to sandwich the fan and the radiator through the case. I would recommend finger tightening these up, one in each corner of the fan to hold the radiator into place. It, it makes it a lot easier later down the line. Trust me, because if you need to realign the radiator, you can just slide it up and tighten them in with a screwdriver later. But yeah, once again, attach all the fans just with one in each corner like this nice and easily and what we're going to do then is put the rest of the screws in now with this case specifically push the radiator up all the way and then use a screwdriver to fasten all of the screws up and we should be good to go now what you want to do is feed all the cables through to the back side for easy cable management and to make it easier to plug in everything into that control box later on in the video which there is a separate section for that. Now what we're going to do is locate a thumb nut and what you want to do then now is remove the plastic off the cold plate, not changing any of the mounting hardware, lower the cooler onto the motherboard, making sure the standoffs line up with the cutouts and finger tighten one thumb nut into the corner and one into the opposing corner to distribute that mounting pressure evenly and just finger tighten these to begin with just so you can get them all into place. And then I would recommend using a screwdriver. You can finger tighten them up all the way, but a screwdriver until each of the nuts stops rotating, right? That's the best way to do it. Now what you wanna do is remove the plastic from the screen because what we're going to do is attach the screen. As I mentioned previously, this attaches with magnets only and that contact piece. Now what you wanna do is lower the screen onto the pump top and press firmly but not too hard and it should snap into place and if you're lucky, you'll get this guy on your screen. <laughs> These two cables need to be fed through to the back to plug into the control box and your motherboard. I would recommend feeding this through now because it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. You'll notice there's a single signal wire left over. This plugs into your motherboard. Now we need to plug this into a motherboard. This is dependent on your board. You can plug it into a CPU fan or CPU opt or whatever. I'm gonna plug this into CPU fan because some boards will complain about nothing being plugged in. Now locate that USB 2.0 splitter and what we're going to do is, the way I recommend doing this is, locate a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard, feed that cable in through the backside and plug it into your motherboard. This part of the guide is common for both Intel and AMD installations. Rather than us putting it in the video twice, we decided to have a separate section for the wiring since as mentioned, it's the same for every type of system. All right, locate the RGB control box. We're gonna be plugging this in first and we're doing this in a certain order just to make it easier to plug everything in because yeah, let's make it easy because this can be quite daunting for people who've never done this before. Okay, so first off the bat, what we're going to do is locate the ribbon cable from the pump top that we passed through earlier on in the video. It looks like this, it's got a white marking on it and what you wanna do, this is pretty clever actually, there's a white marking on the control box itself and what we're going to do is plug that ribbon cable in and align those white markers up together. This way you don't mess up and you don't plug it in the wrong way and it's only plugged in one way. And once you've done that, we're gonna move on to the next thing. What we're going to do then is plug the USB cable from the pump top, right, the one that we passed through earlier, into that USB 2.0 splitter cable. This also only plugs in one way, so you shouldn't have any problems getting this to fit. And then the next thing we're going to do is locate the USB cable from the control box and we're going to plug it into the free part on that splitter as well. Same thing here, only plugs in one way, push firmly to attach it. Next up, we're going to connect the power to the control box. So locate that SATA power cable. And then what we're going to do is locate some SATA power from your power supply of your system and plug that cable in to power the control box. Now, everything here is not optional. It does need to be plugged in this way. Now, we're going to plug in the RGB from the fans, from the front fan cables that we passed through earlier, into the side that is labeled RGB hub. What we're going to do now is, again, locate those cables. These are labeled with yellow tags that say RGB hub, and then we're going to plug them in in order from one, two, and then three. So you just push these in. Uh, you don't need to push very hard. They will clip into place and make a nice locking sound once they're in. And once all three are plugged in, 
we can move on to plugging in the PWM cable. So you can see here, this side is labeled fans and the order is reversed. So it's from right to left. We're gonna plug in fans one, two, and three. So locate the three PWM fan cables that we passed through from the front fans earlier on in the video. And it's as simple as lining those up with those fan headers. They only plug in one way, push in firmly. They will lock into place. And once all three of these are plugged in, we can move on to configuring it in Corsair IQ. Let's take a bit of a look at Corsair IQ and how to configure this cooler with IQ. We're not going super in depth, we're just showing you what you need to get started. What you wanna do is download and install the latest version of Corsair IQ. I'll put a link to that in the description if you don't know how to get it, but yeah, just grab the latest version and it will most likely prompt you to install the latest firmware for the cooler. If not, make sure you check for the latest firmware for the cooler. But let's dive in and take a look at a few of the settings here with the H150i Elite LCD. So if we hover over the device in the home screen, it shows a list of different things we can configure here. So we can go lighting effects. Now this is just gonna say, hey, let's, let's run a wizard to figure out what we've got connected here. So if this is the first time you're using this cooler, you can actually run through this wizard and help configure everything. So we'll just run through it really quickly. So we click run wizard, then it will be like, here are your four pin ports. So this is in regards to the RGB ports. We'll click next. It'll run auto detection on all of the ports to figure out what fans you've got connected. Just click next. Click next again, so it starts the auto detection process. It detected three fans, because we've got three fans connected, and it detected the type of fans as well. So we just hit finish, and we're good to go. You can dive in and start configuring the lighting on each of these fans as well, If and you can actually change the order of the ports as well, which is a new feature with IQ. Before you had to plug them in in order, now you can just rearrange them and set it up if you're doing sequential lighting. Next up, we've got the configuration for the ring of the cooler. So the outer ring of the cooler is RGB as well. And there's a bunch of stuff you can, you can set here. You can set it to screen lighting, which will basically echo whatever you've got on the screen at the time. Or you can do other stuff like, hey, I wanna add a watercolor layer or whatever. You can basically set the different color spectrums or whatnot. You can also go in and configure all of the fans too. So this is pretty standard IQ stuff. You basically can select the effect. You can change it to whatever you want it to do on the fly, or you can go in and create lighting zones. You can customize all the lighting. Remember guys, this is not a Corsair IQ guide. This is just to show you what appears when this cooler is plugged into your system in IQ if you're already using it. This is basically setting up the lighting for when IQ is not running. It says it right here, right? So if IQ is not running on your system or you're booted into an alternate operating system like any Linux distro, then you can set it up in Windows if you're dual booted or whatnot and set it up and you should be okay to go. And there's also the screen setup stuff. Now, this is to do with you setting up the display in the default sense of, you know, whatever temperature or whatnot is displayed here. So you can be like, hey, I want to change it to, let's say, CPU core 10, right? So it will show you that temperature or CPU core 4 or whatever, right? So you can you can change that here. We'll just leave it on the default for now. With that said, you can change the different types of displays you have here. There's a lot of different options here. Right? You can have like a little clock. I kind of like that. It'd be like the turbo fan. Just lots of of different stuff you can set up here. We'll just put on the default setting again. Then you've got your hardware screen setup. Basically the way this works is you can be like, you wanna set up an image, you can have a static image or an animation. You can be like, okay, let's upload an animation. I'll just upload this and it will display on the cool line. You can change the scale of it, you know, basically however you want it to display you can make a display, but we'll just put it back to the default size. We'll just leave that on there because that looks actually pretty, pretty dang cool. Next up, you've got the cooling setting. So this is to do with the fans that are detected that were connected. So each fan you can control individually. Basically the way this works is you can go ahead and set up one of the default profiles. So quiet, balance, extreme, zero RPM, whatnot. Or you can create a custom fan curve. And this is, I just, I made this earlier. It's just me mucking around just to show you that you can drag these data points around and make a fan curve. And then if you wanna apply that to the fans, all you need to do is select each fan, drop it down, 
I called it custom one because that's the default one and you can then go ahead and select that. You can also set up different fan profiles for the pump as well. I just left it on quiet because that's the default for the cooler out of the box. There's other little things like you can set up different types of alerts. If it gets too hot, you can shut it down to protect your system or not completely up to you. And then there's the device settings, which basically just says, hey, there's firmware updates or whatnot. We can check for updates. I've already fully updated it, but yeah, this is good to just check that, you know, everything is up to date. That's basically it. Like it's not overly complicated. I'm gonna set it back to Rainbow Wave as the scene so I can go back and film some B-roll of it. If you had success with this installation guide, your PC should look a little something like this. this. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video and if you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord or drop a comment down below, but make sure you read the comment section first because myself or someone probably would have answered your question already and just take that into consideration before asking any questions. I only say this because I don't want you to waste your time asking a question and not get it answered because it was answered in the video. Anyways guys, if you like this video and it helped you and you like these type of videos, please subscribe or consider supporting us by clicking that join button to become a member. We've got some new membership stuff coming really soon as well or on Floatplane to get early access. And if you guys didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And I really do hope that this video helped you with your quest to install this cooler system. Yeah.